You're on a leisurely walk with your pet when out of nowhere, another dog unleashed confronts you. This could turn into a terrible scene. How should you deal with a loose dog whose owner is missing? That's the question we're going to discuss on today's Paw Report with Dr. Sally Foote of the Ocall Veterinary Clinic. Stay with us. Paw Report on WEIU is supported by Rural King, America's farm and home store, livestock feed, farm equipment, pet supplies, and more. You can find your store and more information regarding Rural King at RuralKing.com. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Paw Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. Okaw Vet Clinic in Tuscola and Dr. Sally Foote remind you to properly take care of your pets and are happy to help support the Paw Report on WEIU. Okaw Vet Clinic located at 140 West Sale Street in downtown Tuscola. More information available at okawvetclinic.com. Thanks for joining us for this episode of The Paul Report. I am your host, Kelly Goodwin, and joining us for this episode is our friend and resident, Dr. Sally Foote, and her partner in crime, Ranger. Ranger. Thanks for coming, Ranger. <laughs> we love it when you come. He's going to be kind of scurrying all around the set today as we talk about a very important topic. Yeah. Uh, when, I, when I reached out to you again to be on The Paul Report, you said I know exactly what topic we should talk about, and that is um, what to do when you're walking through your neighborhood, out in the country, uh, on the beach, <laughs> if that's where you're at, and you have your pet on a leash and you encounter a loose dog. It can mm -hmm. be a very grave situation. Right. You've encountered that with oh, yeah. patients and clients that you've had. And myself. Gonna, and yourself. <laughs> uh, first, let's talk about most communities do have leash laws. Yes. Well, really, you know, all states have laws that require primarily dogs, but still require the dog to be confined, and confinement then can be defined as a secure uh, like fencing enclosure or a leash, and so primarily a leash. And so <clears throat> when the dog is not like behind a regular fence, then the dog needs to be on a leash such that he can be controlled. So if he sees a rabbit running across the street, he's not going to dart out and go chasing out. And this is not only in, the, and then also too, if people walk by, because movement, people walking, especially runners, bicyclists, and now got somebody walking with their own dog on a leash, mm -hmm. can be what this dog in this yard sees as, I want to chase. And chasing is a normal dog behavior. Or this dog says, I don't like other dogs. Or in that chasing, the dog also barked or you know bit at runners and things because the dog saw those things crossing in front of the territory as a threat. So in other words, that's the behavior of the dog. So how do we can reliably control that in a community? As it, you use a leash. If he's out in your front yard, you've got him on a leash. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've got some kind of containment. That's your responsibility as a pet owner, and it is required by the state statutes, the Animal Control Act of Illinois. Now, most cities will then define it maybe even a little bit more to say it must be on a six foot leash or so on and then add fines, you know, if there's a violation of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest deterrent if somebody is punished for Oh yes, once you have to pay for it. Once you have to pay <laughs> for it. And you remember, it, yeah. gosh, better not do it. You know, being approached by a loose <laughs> dog, and it's happened to me, it's happened to you, is a very scary, could be a traumatic situation. Mm -hmm. Every situation is, is definitely going to be different, but there are some tactics, some mental things that you can prepare for in the event uh -huh. uh, of going out. First is, um, it seems simple, but try to avoid the situation. Right, so if you know, and yes, it's a pain, but sorry, I'm gonna keep my dog and myself safe. It's a pain if I realize, okay, it's April now and the weather's nice, and Mrs. Jones always lets her Labrador loose in the front yard, who may sniff around and stuff, but when that Labrador sees, he looks up and he starts staring at my dog, and that's tempting fate. I don't want that temptation for that dog to be like, oh, this is the day I want to now come running after you and your dog because maybe this is the day that another bunny scurried behind my dog and that was a double temptation for the dog. Um, so I'm going to avoid walking past that dog's, that dog's home. And you get these zigzaggy routes. And I've talked to some clients like, I just wish I could just walk a nice path around my neighborhood. But, I, but if I do that, then there's this 
chance or it agitates my dog or this other dog will come barreling out and it's scary as you know what. And I'm like, you're right. But you're going to go to being safe first. Then secondly, if you know this dog is always out loose, you're going to call this person and say, hey, look, your dog, you may not realize this, you can be kind, right? Mm -hmm. You may not realize this, but when your dog is outside without you, he will get up and be staring at my dog. And staring is the first level right before lunge, chase, and possibly bite. It's on the ladder of aggression. You can go to my website at the vet clinic and publish <laughs> it. Anyway, um, that is, and that is how a dog, and some dogs see other dogs as a threat. And there's nothing I'm doing about it. It's up to this dog, whatever. But this is the reality of what's happening. So either can you put, put your dog on a leash or at least let's make a deal. I'm going to walk my dog at 10 a.m. Can you make sure your dog is put up at 10 a.m.? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, just the end result is we just don't want these loose dogs that could then also get hit by a car. I've seen that happen. You know, I think the classic line, and I've heard it is, oh, my dog's friendly. It won't, <laughs> it won't hurt your dog. How many times have you heard that? All the time. And yes, your dog may be friendly in many of these various situations, like if I'm just walking without my dog. If you're standing outside with your dog, because how you are friendly to me is telling your dog I'm friendly, and so therefore he's friendly to me. But your dog may not like other dogs. And now when I walk by with another dog, it changes the meaning of me. So now to your dog, I'm no longer that friendly, you see? And this is what perplexes people. Well, he's always friendly all the other times. Sure he is. It's all about these specific scenarios. It, it's not like they, if they're unfriendly, they're unfriendly about everything. They're unfriendly about certain situations or certain you know, scenarios like, Oh, another dog walking by, and I'm going to bark and lunge after it. And if your dog is standing there barking and he hasn't gone chasing out of the road, it doesn't mean he won't. It's just that he just hasn't crossed that fine line yet, but it's coming. It's coming. Do dogs have certain body language? And how do you read? How do you know when a dog that's coming at you is going to be aggressive versus friendly and licky and, oh, hi, I'm just here to okay, greet so that, your pet? Right, so that's what I call like the dangerous dance. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so there's what's called uh, reactive or I like to call it rough and rowdy play. Some dogs have always been allowed. And while it's a little bit of puppy growing up, but they need to learn to calm down from the two dogs who body slam on each other, you know, and run up on each other and roll and roughhouse in play because it's actually this skirting over of play to aggression because he, quickly these two dogs, if one bites a little hard on the other one too hard, then you've got a dog fight on your hand because it's just that running gets them amped up. So any dog running, I'd go with what could happen. The worst, that dog may aggress because why would he suddenly want to just run. And even though the tail is wagging, there's a lot of different meanings to the wagging of a dog's tail. When, like say this dog, when his tail is up like this, straight up, that's not happy dog. That is a dog alerting. Dangerous here, dangerous here. Everybody, you see it, you see it? I'm gonna go after it now. I'm not gonna defend the territory. I'm gonna get him out of here. That's what that kind of a tail wag means. It, mm -hmm. And so the dog is, zooming at the first thing is if you're zooming at me this could be trouble so i need to like stop <laughs> stand in front of my dog or get my dog behind a parked car get my dog behind a bush stop where i'm going don't co keep proceeding you know in the direction of this dog coming at us or keep going because it's that movement that's getting this dog to come so stop where you're at or even if you can go backward but don't turn your back on this dog because he may jump on you. And then secondly, if you notice any of the hair rising on the back, now it might be hard to see, you know? And lastly, the dog's head position, because most dogs that are on that, I see you, it's like seriously, their head lowers and it's straight down in there and they're staring at the target they want to go at, which is usually your dog. Right. Now, what about, and you're a behavioral specialist, the collar has a lot to do with how a dog behaves too. I mean, if you tighten or clench the collar, is that, does that have some technique to it or is that some reasoning behind, uh -huh. not only your dog, the way that you treat your dog on the collar, um, does that have some end results in right. these situations? So, yeah, so we're getting, it's a little bit of the finesse of learning leash handling skills and when you're, you're walking with your dog and leading your dog and how your dog, your dog on leash, you know, follows with you. So point being, a lot of the old traditional training of like to get a dog to stop, like stop jumping up, et cetera, would be taking a choke collar and yanking it hard to punish the dog to stop doing that. Sure, the dog would stop doing that. 
what the dog learns is any kind of yank is painful. It's, you know, it's painful. It's, um, you know, difficult. It means it, a punishment is coming. And so pulling and yanking on the collar, so let's say the dog is loose and suddenly you grab the collar, then the dog maybe like flips his head and tries to bite you. Okay, so if your dog is loose, you, want, you really want to avoid suddenly grabbing the collar. But secondly, with, when your dog is on leash and you really tighten up on the collar, now it's like saying bad things are happening, bad things are happening, and it may actually agitate your dog more. So that's, that's where, why actually when a dog comes, like it happened to me just the other day in my neighborhood, I didn't know this dog be loose in his front yard, but he was. Right. Here comes this yellow Labrador mix barreling at me and Bella with his hackles up. I'm like, oh. I just, and she's on a gentle leader head halter, but still, I just, I didn't drop the leash, but I'm like, I'm gonna let you stand here relaxed. Because if I'm, first of all, if I'm pulling her closer to me, that means that dog's gonna come to me, too. And I may get jumped on and attacked. Secondly, if I'm not pulling on her, you know, like saying, bad stuff, bad stuff, then she may be a little less apt to now jump around and be like pulling back on me, you know, increasing mm -hmm. her agitation, so, if she's less jumping around, it may help this dog to be less agitated on her. And all this stuff happens in literally one to two seconds. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's a, it's a lot to think about. You know, what's your game plan when it's right. happening? So when that dog was barreling at me, the first, <laughs> first thing I did being on a walk was took her bag of stool and threw it at the dog. It's a startle technique. Mm -hmm. I, it's like, woo, what's that? And that was the point. If you get the dog to go, the running, the charging dog, woo, what's that? That's a little second for you to now maybe back up, increase the distance between the two dogs. And of course, me and Molly started yelling at the top of my lungs, get your dog, because right. some people are in the front yard. I don't know if it's their dog or not. And then saying, go, in a very deep voice to the dog, get. And I stopped my foot, because I didn't have an umbrella. I didn't have any projectile stream mm -hmm. <laughs> spray with me. I wasn't expecting this, but anyway. And so the dog kind of was now doing that dance around, maybe 10 feet away barking with his hackles up because, and I kept yelling, get your dog, you know, at the top of my voice. I don't know where an owner may be around here, and hopefully somebody would be, or get the dog. And I just stood in my place because if I moved back or forward, I knew that could have this There's dog. that movement. The movement, right. And so then, then this man started coming and calling for his dog, which of course the dog is ignoring him. Most dogs will. There is a, I don't care how well trained your dog is off leash, mm -hmm. When they're like, I want after this, their focus on you has gone out the window. Well, so at least the dog, though, now wanted to avoid the owner. <laughs> so he started meandering around further away from us, and I just waited for the dog to get behind a bush as he was, like, avoiding his owner. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got behind a bush or a parked car. And then I could back away with Bella to get back further down the street and make a turn so the dog couldn't see us. But the whole time, I did not turn my back on the dog. We kind of walked backward, or if I took a few steps forward, I was looking constantly behind me. Because it's happened where now this movement, or if this dog's like, I see the ability <laughs> to go after that dog again, they may come after you again. So then I just turned it off. I'm not going down that street in Tuscola. <laughs> <laughs> there's, your, there's your alternative. Right, that's my route. <laughs> I just want to... You hit a really good point, and one I wanted to ask you about, because I think... Uh, probably a lot of pet owners in, encounter this is how do you deal with the owner of the dog that's loose? I mean, I think your your instinct is to get your dog and be really aggressive, yes. but yes. sometimes that might not be the best tactic. Uh, in the moment, in the moment when this loose dog is there, be as aggressive, be, just say, get your, I don't care what language you use. You gotta let, you gotta let this other person know this is not okay. Mm -hmm. This is really scary for me. It's scary for my dog. As a veterinarian, I've had plenty of dogs come in with their ear ripped in half. I had one dog where bitten in the back, half the skin was pulled backward. And that happened in a one second on this little poodle from a German Shepherd dog that was off lead and came into their yard with their dog on a little stakeout chain. I've had it where people have rushed in with animals dead. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is not oh, just a little inconvenient, or oh, just one little fluke. This is serious stuff. And uh, one of my clients, I republished this article I'd written a few years ago because he came in and said with his little dog, he was walking and a large muscular dog came charging out the same way. Luckily, <clears throat> excuse me, it didn't erupt in an actual, you know, biting fight on the dogs. And the owner of the large muscular dog came out quickly and got the dog. But for the man, he said, I couldn't sleep for three nights. It was like a nightmare to him 
because of how scared he felt that this big dog might jump on him and bite him in this little melee, you know, mm -hmm. arr, barking and his dog barking and like, right. holy poop, what do we do right. now? And then also feeling like, well, I, I, I need and like to walk my dog, now where do I go? And thirdly, well, that was totally unfair. I was doing, I have my pet, you know, on a leash. I have my pet responsibly, you know, kept. Mm -hmm. Why is this dog allowed to run loose? What do I do now? And that was some of the things he shared with, with me, which is mm -hmm. part I published the article and I gave the man some tips on what to do. But it affects the humans heavily. Sure, sure. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a mental drain. It's, it's yes. disturbing, really. <laughs> You know, in the day and age of cell phones, another thing you could do is, uh -huh. it, you know, if you're walking along and a dog lunges and you're yelling, A, for the dog to get back or to, for an owner, and you see some standbys or witnesses, have them record it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. whip out your phone, take a video. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. because sometimes, because to an owner, again, they walk out and the dog looks happy and fine. Like, what are you talking about? He's a fine dog, right? They didn't see it happen, so they may not believe it happened till they see it. Mm -hmm. And the dog may act completely differently when the owner is present versus when the owner is not present. That's right. It's like kids in a classroom. Yes, when, exactly. When the teacher's there, it's a whole different story. Right. Uh, another tactic, you can pay attention to your surroundings. Yes. You know, yeah. that's a big one. Yes, yes. I, I like to say, when you walk your dog, you cannot wear flip-flops. You cannot have your earbuds in. Mm -hmm. And you should always be looking ahead of your, kind of like driving a car, right? You should be looking ahead of yourself by at least 20 to 30 mm -hmm. feet and kind of around what's coming up and what's going around. Right. You know, so you're always kind of predicting and scanning the environment, the horizon, as we say, you know. Remain calm, too. Yes, you remain calm. I mean, if, if there is a situation of aggression, uh, does our body language and our feelings kind of translate into our pet do oh yes. they know oh yes they do they so definitely remaining tell. calm is important yeah it's tough i will admit it's very tough it's not easy you but do the best you can and that's where like your instinct is to just go run while the dog's going to chase you down but it, it's not easy it is not when you're in that situation it is a very difficult situation how do dogs <coughs> develop um the behavior to want to confront you you know what I mean like you were talking why do some lunge yeah, why, do, why some... do some lunge why do you know how is that a behavior that's learned well okay so learning on that behavior typically comes from first of all as a puppy and when I say a puppy ages eight weeks to about 16 weeks of age they were not around bicycles passing by joggers passing by UPS trucks coming FedEx trucks coming you know these things that move and come and go and receive a reward for not barking, not lunging, because the first inclination is it moves, I should want to chase it. Okay, so that's a little bit of their normal response, if you will, but we're wanting to train them for a different response, which is ignore it, it's not a big deal, it's part of your everyday world, okay? But you, you dog, need to learn this when you're young, when it's easy, because then <clears throat> when you get over to four months of age, then this is called the fear period, uh, which is normal in dogs, to now look at the world like, what are you? I don't know about you. And if I don't know about you, I should want you to stay a little bit away, which then is the barking. And then if barking keeps you away and, they, and the dog never received anything still good when seeing you walk by or the mm -hmm. neighbor dog walking by, <clears throat> then that dog, and you keep on leaving, now the dog goes, oh, barking works. That's what I'm supposed to do mm -hmm. when you go by. So I bark and then it may even be like, you're not moving, you're not moving. Well, I gotta make my like bark bigger, my body bigger. So now I gotta jump on you or lunge on you because of course if I'm jumping and then the physical agitation of jumping is what leads to I'm gonna grab you with my mouth. Mm -hmm. And then that leads to the bite. And each step like that can be as short as 0.2 seconds. Now certain breeds are more likely to want to chase, more pay more attention to motion Okay, and have more of this, we'll call the word vigilance or looking out for that. And those tend to be our guarding dogs and our shepherd dogs. So it just is, tends to be uh, a more common breed trait that you have to then work harder on with training, like with your Australian shepherds or your German shepherds or your border collies or your corgis or your shelties. And if you look at the history, say, of bite scenarios, you know, I bet you if you asked any runner or marathoner, well, what was the breed of dog that was chasing you down on that country road? Oh, German Shepherd, oh, Collie. Those breeds will come up frequently. And yes, they may be more common breeds on a farm, but also why? Because they're going to chase off the coyote. 
-hmm. and they're going to chase off, you know, the other uh, wildlife or, you know, be a part of guarding that property. That's what their job is. Mm -hmm. So, a Another technique, you, you mentioned the biting, and I thought um, other ways that uh, pet owners can protect themselves is body blocking. Uh -huh. Some other alternatives you right. talked about and you've brought um, kind of a demonstration of an umbrella with you. I'm going to yeah. have you talk about those as we kind of wrap up our last few minutes. Okay. So let's just talk about the really, really scary, well, okay, so like that poor man, you know, you had a really scary situation, like a near, really true injury, and it's going to happen. So we're going to do a quick demo here. So let's pretend, okay, um, let's pretend I have a dog and I'm on a walk, right? Right, right. And this is our dog who's loose in the front yard, just like the other He's day cute, for me. cute, by the way. <laughs> sure, this dog was cute too, not until he was <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> So <clears throat> now when I go on a walk, I'm going to bring an umbrella. I don't care how sunny it is, you're going to bring an umbrella. Why? Because now when I'm on a walk, and here is the dog, all this, and when the dog first sees me and my dog, and he's like, bark, bark, and he starts running, I'm going to pop this umbrella open, and it's my shield, right? Mm -hmm. It's a shield. And we're really, actually, where I want to do now is, when the dog is far away, I can maybe put it in front of me and my dog, because if he doesn't see my dog, it may stop him from running. But let's say in the holy poop moment, <laughs> right, <laughs> and right. I pop it open, now you're like here, right, you're really pretty close. I'm going to keep this umbrella in front of the dog because that's what's shielding this dog from being able to get to me or my dog. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, I'm also screaming at the top of my lungs, get your dog out of here. Right, right. And then when I need to back away, I can keep this in front of me and back away with my dog and move it around, and that protects me and my dog. And then when we're done, I can fold this up. I can tell my dog, you're so wonderful for not flipping out too. Mm -hmm. And then go home and call animal control and report on the people. But, it, but this is something everybody has an umbrella. Take it. Take it with you on the walk. Even one older woman when I published this said, well, you know, I can use it as a little walking stick. There you go. And a walking stick is another deterrent. <laughs> right. Even if I just, if I couldn't pop it open and I just did this right in front of the dog's face, it still would be a block, a body block or a deterrent. And of course, if I can get my dog behind me, but sometimes in that moment, everything's wound up. That right. could be hard to do, or you're just like, I'll just say it finally too. If in a moment, who's going to take the bite, me or my dog? Frankly, dogs get injured far less than we do in these moments. My dog, all dogs have loose skin around the neck here. And the reason why is because when a dog goes and grabs this, that loose skin is protecting their jugular vein and their trachea mm -hmm. and vital organs. If this dog jumps up on my shoulder, on my face, I don't have that much loose skin the, and, or my arm. He's going to really get me bad. Secondly, sometimes in that moment, it's like, this isn't working. <laughs> Frankly, if you drop your dog's leash and this dog's like, oh, now he's off leash. Now, now, he we, could, get to, now we get to play well, or fight. Play or, oh, he can really come back on me. Sometimes the other dog just slinks away because this dog may see the other dog on leash is like, you now are handicapped. You can't come after me, so it can embolden this dog. Mm -hmm. So that's just the last final Hail Mary tip. <laughs> well, and also the deterrent sprays. Yes, Let's talk about spray. that real quick. Right. So uh, any kind of an insect spray, or there are some that spray actual water that are going to shoot out in a straight stream, right? Because you want something that psh, I can shoot right at this dog. And you don't have to necessarily try to aim for the face. Just aim at the dog if you're in the front, the chest. The point is the dog, the stream is coming at them, and the dog wants to avoid the stream. So now I can be like, Psh, like this, right. and keep this dog away. And uh, I had one client with a little Yorkshire Terrier where in their neighborhood a husky had killed another Yorkshire Terrier. Mm -hmm. So for her to be able to feel safe walking her Yorkshire Terrier, she, she asked me about using a insect spray that would project a strong stream because that was immediately available in her garage and it was the next day and I said yeah use it there you know you have to be ready in case the other party the other family is not going to be responsible with this dog while some things were pending you know mm -hmm. on a case and such and um, you're not going to hurt dramatically the other dog who might be attacking mm -hmm. and it's enough to startle that dog and keep you and your dog safe if this husky comes flying at you and your little dog when you just try to walk around your own property right yeah 
Well, some excellent points today, as always, Dr. <laughs> Foote. And if anybody out there has any other questions or maybe wants some more information about the topic that we talked to today, Dr. Foote has information on her website at the O'Call Vet Clinic, and so they can just log on. And they yeah. can also sign up for your newsletter, which right, is Right, we have a, a newsletter thing. there, and we put articles like this in there every month. And then, of course, you can always email us, and we have a Facebook page as well, OCA Vet Clinic in Tuscola. Excellent. Well, thank you, Dr. Foote. Thanks, Ranger. He's roaming around He's somewhere, somewhere in the studio. Oh, and probably. we also thank you, our viewers, for joining us on this episode of The Paul Report. Thanks for joining us, and, of course, we'll see you next time. OCA Vet Clinic in Tuscola and Dr. Sally Foote remind you to properly take care of your pets and are happy to help support the Paw Report on WEIU. OCA Vet Clinic located at 140 West Sales Street in downtown Tuscola. More information available at OCAVetClinic.com. Dave's Decorating Center is a proud supporter of the Paw Report on WEIU. Dave's Decorating Center features the Mohawk Smart Strand Silk Forever Clean Carpet. Dave's Decorating Center, Authorized Mohawk Color Center in Charleston. The Paw Report on WEIU is supported by Rural King, America's farm and home store, livestock feed, farm equipment, pet supplies, and more. You can find your store and more information regarding Rural King at ruralking.com. Additional support for the Paw Report on WEIU is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. Thank you.